Hey everybody and welcome to another video. This uh, interface that you're looking at here might not be particularly familiar to it, or it might, you never know. In this video, we're going to start looking at post-production and how to do it and how to kind of keep your stuff organized. Before I get started though, I wanna say a huge thank you to everybody who subscribed. We are now a Nat Winky away from a thousand subscribers, which is completely mad to me. Never imagined that many people would be interested in listening to me jabber on. Obviously, an even bigger thank you to everybody who has become a patron, either on Patreon or on Subscribestar. Links to Patreon are in the description below, and every little bit helps. I'm always grateful for everybody who has shown any support to this channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, feel free to do that. Hit the notification icon. Give me a thumbs up on this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you want me to tackle any particular topics or if you have any thoughts about the topics that I've covered thus far, feel free to let me know in the comments. Anyway, let's get on with this. So post-production is vitally important. Even the most perfect of perfect renders still needs a little bit of adjustment in post-production, whether that be to tidy up little minor details or to make some color corrections or to just generally improve the overall quality of the image. Maybe that's reducing noise or adding contrast. There's so many different things you can do. Coming straight out of Dad's studio, most images, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of your images are going to need some adjustment or other made to them. Even if that's just something silly like changing the image resolution or something like that. Now we have various tools available for doing that. I would say the most common and probably the best, the industry standard really, are Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. Now they're two different pieces of software but they're kind of joined at the hip because you can jump between one and the other and that allows you to be able to make kind of tiny little corrections in Photoshop and then you can jump back into Lightroom and change the whole style of the image. And that's what we're going to talk about in this series of videos is how to make those minor tweaks in Photoshop and how to make the bigger kind of whole image adjustments in Lightroom as well. And the reason I'm doing this is because post-production is vitally important, but also there are published artists on the Dash Studio store who are expecting people to pay 10, 20, 30 dollars for simple Photoshop actions and Lightroom actions. And when you realize how easy these things are to make, you'll realize just how much these guys are trying to rip you off. It's just, you know, you want to be supporting the published artists who are actually putting some work in, not these guys who throw together a five minute Lightroom action and then try and sell it. Because as I say, you'll realize how easy it is to make these things. Now, before I go even further, I know a lot of you will be sitting there thinking, well, I don't have Lightroom, I don't have Photoshop. Um, I, I just haven't got time to do videos like this for every single image editor and every single cataloging piece of software. So I'm just going to stick to Photoshop and Lightroom because they are the most common and they only cost £10 a month. You pay £10 a month to Adobe for the photography package and you get Lightroom and Photoshop. So it's not an expensive piece of software either. So, first thing we're going to look at is Adobe Lightroom, and that's where I'm in here. So, when you first download and open Lightroom, it will ask you to create a catalog file. What a catalog file is, is it's just a list of all of your images, and within the catalog it will have thumbnails, and it will also have an XML document for every single image which contains any adjustments you make. Now, that might sound complicated, but what it actually does, what Lightroom is, is it's a cataloging piece of software, not a file browser. By that, what I mean is it'll show you previews of all of your images, and you can make adjustments using the develop tab for those images. It has all of these wacky knobs and sliders on the right hand side here, once you have an image in, that you can adjust and it will show you what the image looks like here. But it doesn't actually alter the original file. 
by so you can make all of the adjustments that you want in here and with the push of a button you can revert back to the original document it's never touched it only makes adjustments to the original document if you make it most of the time you'll just be making adjustments and then exporting those images into a different folder like an output directory so that you have the new images but you still keep the originals as well and that's incredibly useful in what we call non-destructive editing and that's why Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop work so well together because you can create a virtual copy of your image make all of the adjustments in Lightroom send it to Photoshop to make those minor tweaks, corrections and adjustments and then send it back into Lightroom for final production and exporting into whatever file format you want it to be in. That's really useful. <laughs> now what we can also do is we can actually set up Adobe Lightroom to watch a folder. So we can have it watching your Daz Studio output directory and it will automatically import any images, that any renders that you make so that you don't have to do any sort of heavy lifting it will automatically import those into another folder and then you can make the adjustments you want in post-production without worrying about damaging the original so this is really kind of useful stuff so that's the first thing we're going to do i'm going to come into file and then there's an auto input setting here and we're going to auto input settings now we'll click enable auto import and we're going to say watched folder and we're going to change that to wherever our output directory is for our dash studio renders we have to make sure that the directory is empty so there you go that's a useful bit of information so we're actually going to control x no we're not we're going to create a new folder that's what we're going to do and we're going to call this auto import and we're going to close that directory and then we can change this to auto import and there we go and a subfolder name will just be auto imported folder we don't need to add it to a collection file naming we're just going to leave that to file name so that it doesn't change the names of the files develop settings none metadata none keywords none initial previews minimal and we can change that to embedded and sidecar that just means that the previews will be more useful to us when we come into edit and then we click ok so now when we render images, we render into that folder and it will automatically import them into Das Studio so that we can play around with them in post-production, which is, I think you'll find, quite useful. So now I've copied a handful of images into that folder and it's automatically imported them and generated previews. And as you can see, lovely jubbly. Now in later videos, we're obviously gonna look at how to mess around with these and edit them but if we quickly were to jump into the develop folder you can see all of these different editing settings that are available um, these are all just ones that i've either downloaded or created myself and you can get some really wacky looking images and some really great pre um kind of edit quick edits that you can do that will improve the look of your photo and as i said all of these generally speaking have only taken sort of one or two minutes to create and they can make really dramatic images um, even more dramatic looking or you can soften them up a little bit and the cool thing is if you've rendered say a whole load of images in one scene and you want to make the same adjustments to multiple images you can just select all of them like so you can make whatever changes you want to one of them and then just hit sync and it'll go brrr, and it'll do the same changes to every single image so really really useful really powerful tools I hope you found this useful. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.